I really want to buy this truck. But first, I need to get my commercial driver's license. That used to be a quick process, but 2022 federal regulations now require that I complete an entry-level driver's training course. I found a school that will satisfy the federal requirements and prepare me to pass my skills test in just eight days. By the end of this video, I'm going to be driving a 48-foot semi-trailer through downtown Boise. What could possibly go wrong? I ended up failing that test. Oops. Okay, well, I kind of messed that one up. <laughs> Before I can start my behind the wheel training, I need to complete a 10 hour online course. This course covers things like air brakes, vehicle inspections, and the principles behind safe driving. I was very bored. Seven modules down, five to go. But it was a great excuse to drink lots of coffee and spend some time with Oliver. Now it's time to head down to my local driver's license office to take the written test. Wish me luck. So I had to take three tests today. I took the general CDL knowledge test, the air brake endorsement test, as well as the combo vehicle endorsement test that would allow me to pull trailers. So I started with the air brakes test and I passed it. And then on the combo test, I got the first question wrong, second question right, and then the third question, the computer locked up and the wrong answer was selected. I wouldn't ask the woman that's working at the desk for help. She hit submit and submitted my wrong answer. I ended up failing that test by one question, but I did pass the 40 question general knowledge test. So that's a good thing. And I'm gonna be able to come back and retake that combo vehicle test in three days time. It's been three days since I took the test last time, which means I'm eligible today to take this last combos test and finally get my learner's permit. And I officially passed, which means I now have my class A learner's permit and I can start driving real trucks. That means that 14 days starts today. I have 14 days until I can take the behind the wheel driving test and get my official class a driver's license it turns out getting a cdl requires a lot of tests and this next test for me is a drug test all right drug test complete which means the last thing on my list is to get my physical done and then i'm ready to drive a truck we loaded up and headed 400 miles south to boise idaho oliver sang lots of old mcdonald with a dozer here and a dump truck there E-I-E-I-O. Good morning. It's 5 a.m. on my first official day of trucking school. I've never driven a big rig. I don't really know what to expect. And somehow in the next eight days, I'm supposed to become a qualified big rig driver. <laughs> in 15 minutes, I have a taxi schedule that's going to pick me up and it's going to take me to some dirt lot across town where I'm going to meet a stranger and get in a truck with him for the day. <laughs> My taxi driver didn't question the fact that he was dropping me off at an abandoned quarry. Honk truck. I wandered down the hill and hoped I was in the right place. I see a bunch of trucks down here, so I think I'm in the right spot. I've been putting off getting my CDL for a long time just because I kept hearing about how much of a pain it was and that you have to go to school and all these different things. But for the trucks that I want to be able to drive, it's pretty important that I have a CDL. So here I am. This video is not sponsored by Idaho CDL. They did agree to allow me to film, which was extremely nice of them. Riley, Riley, Scott. Scott, nice to meet you. I met two guys named Scott. Maybe there's candy in that container and hopefully coffee. Day one today here at Idaho CDL, I'm focusing on pre-trip. The pre-trip is one of those federal requirements I have to pass in order to get my CDL. We literally just went through all of this and I already can't remember what to do. Okay, starting in the front of the truck, we've got our four L's. So I'm looking at the lights, the lean, no leaks, and don't tell me, and license plate. And then now we're gonna go down the passenger side of the truck. So we're gonna start on this side of the truck over here and we're gonna point out things that are different than what are on the other side. Yeah little break time as we finish up our pre-trip inspection and then I think it might be time to shift gears. I can't wait to get behind the wheel of this truck but as they keep stressing to me most on-the-road accidents occur because of a damaged piece of equipment that could have been caught during the pre-trip so they really stress the importance of the pre-trip but man I just want to drive a truck. Okay key on 
Lights on. Clearance lights, headlights, high beams, left turn, right turn, hazards. Can you check my ABS light? All right. Clearance lights, tail lights, brake lights, left turn, right turn, hazards. I think I'm getting the hang of this. So we're done with our test. Yes, sir. I just got the best news of the day. We have spent the morning walking around these trucks, inspecting these trucks, looking at these trucks, and it's finally time to drive. I've driven a manual transmission most of my life, and I like to think that I'm pretty good at it. But as Scott starts giving me the rundown, I'm getting pretty nervous. This is where things get interesting. The only time I'm supposed to use the clutch is while starting from a stop. After that, I have to match the RPMs of the engine to the gear I'm shifting into, and it's a lot more difficult than I expected, especially the downshifts. So now, here we go, we're rolling. Yep. Oops. I literally hit the brake instead of the gas. So to double clutch, I go, I go Stop. in, yep. out of gear, in again, there's second. Yep. We are out on the open road. Well, sort of. We're in a little business park where we're going 25 miles an hour, but, oh, hold on, I need to shift, guys. I think that my previous experience driving a manual is actually hurting me right now. The clutch on this truck has a brake, which means that every time I apply it, I'm stopping the input of the transmission. My natural instinct to hit the clutch when shifting is literally preventing me from being able to shift. A little gas now, there you go. Oh man, it's crazy how fast it feels like you're going in this truck. Like, I felt like I was going 90 miles an hour and I would glance down and we're going 19. We're gonna start working on backing the truck up. Wish me luck. And back all the way up until my bumper clears the cones. All right, first test complete. The truck turns sharper than my F-350. The trailer does not. The trailer feels like it is way back there. I can't imagine what towing like a 53 foot would feel like. And that's a wrap on day one. I tell you what, I've never had this much fun at school. I think ever. I was a busy kid. I loved building things, taking things apart and sometimes putting things back together. What you making? I'm making Stuff. That's where my lifetime passion for building started, and it's something that I'd like to share with Oliver. But he's probably not quite old enough yet for me to hand him the hacksaw. Luckily, a friend told us about KiwiCo, and they are the sponsor of today's video. The KiwiCo Panda Crate is a subscription line designed for children 0 to 36 months. Each crate contains two months worth of activities that encourage Oliver to discover and play with purpose. The research-backed toys and activities engage all five senses, which help lay a foundation for future learning and exploration. We selected the Panda Crate Plus, but they also offer a pared down essentials box or the deluxe box, which comes with a book. The Wonder Play guide helps me understand Oliver's brain development and outlines different ways that Oliver can play with the toys as he grows. It was a long drive to Boise, but the counting cards helped keep Oliver busy for the entire drive. If you want to share a passion for learning new things with your child or a grandchild, consider sending them a Panda Crate from KiwiCo. And use the code AMBITION for 20% off your first crate. And for the older kids in your life, or maybe yourself, make sure to check out their complete lineup of crates. You got my mic, buddy. If you don't know who this is, you should look back at our road building videos from last summer. Tyler, Carla, and Charleston flew in for the weekend to keep Courtney and Oliver company while I'm going to trucking school, so now I've got myself a built-in taxi driver. Tyler, what have you guys been up to on your trip to Boise so far? We took the kids to the zoo, we went to a trampoline park, and we ate a lot of food. A lot of food. How many cookies have you eaten? A lot of other cookies. <laughs> All right, Mr. Uber driver, <laughs> thanks for the ride. We'll see you later. Good morning from a very cold day two here at CDL School. We're getting the trucks fired up and I heard rumor that I might be going out on the open road today. It's so cold, even the brakes on the trailer are locked up this morning. There we go. So we're gonna go practice shifting. I'm about to go drive this truck out on the open road with cars and traffic. 
Two hands. It's crazy how just the simplest things I forget, like two hands on the wheel. I didn't think I was a bad driver, but driving with an instructor has me realizing how many bad habits I've developed over the years. Not using a turn signal, not stopping behind the line, not reading the street signs. Those are just a few of the things that Scott had to call me out on. All right, we got a wheel loader behind us, so now I don't think we're the slowest thing on the road. <laughs> we just put fuel in the truck. We're taking a quick little break. I am absolutely fried. Being out here on the road is so different than being just on, in the gravel pit doing circles. There's so much to think about. And it's just when I get comfortable with shifting, I make a mistake and it totally throws me off. But Scott, my instructor, he's been super cool and I am learning a ton. All right, we're back from taking my first little drive out on the real road and now I'm gonna work on my skills course. So the tricky part about the offset is I can't actually see where I wanna go right now because the trailer is completely blocking my view. And so I have to rely on my mirrors to know. I noticed that when I'm backing up, I tend to hug things too close to the driver's side. And I think that's because that's the side that I'm able to see on. Yep. Okay, well, I kind of messed that one up. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull forward. I'm allowed to do two corrections. I'm allowed to pull up twice without any penalty. And now I just need to back into this one until my front bumper clears the blue barrel. That's the backing skills test. I'm taking a little walk, waiting for Courtney and Oliver to come get me. It's a beautiful sunny day and we'll see you tomorrow. You ready to go, Charleston? Yeah. Buddy, you can't see. You ready to try it again? Scorpion pepper. I dare you. I remember what happened last time. That one? Avocados? Yeah, you must be from California. Charleston, what'd they get you? How many apples do you have, Charleston? One, two. Good morning here from Idaho CDL. It is day three here, and today I have a new instructor. So every two days they switch instructors, that way students like me can get a new perspective from a different instructor. My instructor today is named Kelly, and uh, I have a feeling I'm gonna learn a lot from him. I'm still having a hard time with my shifting, especially downshifting. Kelly introduced me to a technique called left foot braking, where I literally use my left foot on the brake and right foot on the gas. This allows me to continue slowing the truck down during the shift with my left foot, while still being able to bring the engine RPM up with my right foot. I doubt it's a method I'm going to use all the time, but it's great to have another trick up my sleeve. Bring the RPMs down, pop it out of here, bring the RPMs up. All right guys, I'm at my first truck stop in a truck. We're here just learning some of the basics of getting fuel, truck etiquette, how a truck stop works. On our way here, we passed a weigh scale and I got to see everything about how the weigh scale works, how the weigh in motion works, when to get over, what the signals mean. Oh, the sun feels so good. Around the truck and uh, just giving it a once over and I heard a little air leak. Right there, this valve is just a little bit open. All right, we made it back to the yard. Kelly and I spent the entire day today out driving. I don't know, we must have drove two or 300 miles, it felt like. It was a great day today, and I think that's uh, pretty much a wrap for day three, so we'll see you tomorrow for day four. Tyler, what's for dinner? Cookies. <laughs> dinner champions. Just like every morning, day four starts with our pre-trip inspection. So we always start our pre-trip in the front of the truck and we're gonna be looking for our four L's. So we're gonna be checking all of our forward facing lights to make sure they're securely mounted, they're not cracked, damaged, or broken, and that they are clean. Next up, we're gonna check for leaks. We're gonna look under the truck and make sure that there aren't any significant leaks. Now we're gonna look for lean. We're gonna make sure that the truck isn't leaning one way or the other, which could indicate a problem with the suspension or the tires. Finally, we're gonna check our license plate. We're gonna make sure that our license plate is securely mounted, not damaged or broken, and that the registration is current. I'm gonna check my coolant reservoir, the radiator, my fan, my belt driven water pump, alternator, wiring, an air compressor, my to airlines, the outside of the truck complete. We move on to the inside. All of the light functions, our seatbelt, our fire extinguisher, and spare fuses, brake test. Any mistake in this portion of the test is an automatic fail of my entire CDL test. My goal of the day was to break some of my bad habits, including cowboy steering. So I can go like this, but what I've been doing is going like this, and that doesn't count. But I still did them, a lot. 
So one of the big rules about this intersection is no shifting on the railroad tracks. Stopping behind the stop line here. And I didn't turn my signal on either. Oh, I grabbed the granny gear. Kelly was mostly patient with me even when I made a wrong turn that landed us on the wrong side of the airport. Another fuel stop, which means that I have officially put an entire tank of fuel through this truck so far during my training. We have been out driving on the city streets all day. It has been, I think, five hours now of nothing but stop and go and traffic lights. I am absolutely <laughs> exhausted. It just takes so much mental concentration to pay attention to the truck and shifting gears and the traffic and the stop lights. Yeah, I'm good. That's it for day four here at Idaho CDL, which means that I am officially now halfway done with my training. We'll see you again tomorrow. I'm home from school for the day, so Oliver and I are going to go on a little bike ride while Courtney eats ice cream. <laughs> Bye, Courtney. Taking Oliver for a bike ride was an opportunity for me to reflect. I feel so fortunate to get to spend this time with my family, doing something new and exciting. None of this would be possible without you. Thank you so much for watching our videos. Last night the time changed, so uh, what was 6 a.m. is now 7 a.m. and I've been up since like 4.30 or, or something like that. Today I'm training the new instructor, Klain, and my job is to make lots of mistakes so that he can correct them. Luckily, I'm pretty good at making mistakes. Today is all about learning braking and speed control. We're going up and over this steep mountain pass here north of Boise. So we're doing what's called stab braking, hitting the brakes, slowing five miles an hour down below our target speed, and then releasing the brakes. That way they have time to cool and they don't build heat. If we were just to hold the brakes the entire time, they would just continue to get hotter and hotter and be less and less effective. My struggles with shifting have me nervous about driving this grade. It's a huge confidence booster when things are actually going well. Maybe I'm starting to get the hang of this. I even scored a few compliments. Any dozers for sale? <laughs> we are about to practice unhitching this trailer for the first time, and then I heard that I might get to hitch up to an even longer one. Let's get to it. Okay, so right here on the landing gear, we've got our handle. All the way out. Yep. Oh yeah, there we go. How are we looking? Today I get to try out a 48 foot trailer. We've been in a 28 up until now. I have a feeling this is gonna be a little bigger. That is way easier to hitch up than my pickup. This part is not easier than hooking a trailer up to my pickup. Oh man, the end of that trailer is way back there. Barely gonna clear that cone. Ah, I hit the cone. <laughs> oh man, I was setting up for my backing test and I already failed. I'm starting to wonder if I'm ready for this long of a trailer. Oh, but my trailer was still on the tracks because it's so long. But Scott must really trust me because we head straight to downtown in rush hour. Here we are, we're, we're downtown in a 48 foot trailer. Oh boy, this is terrifying. Here we go, into the roundabout. I'm gonna take it as wide as we can here. Oh yeah. Okay, we're back in the yard, and my last challenge here is gonna be to put this trailer back where I got it from next to the other ones. So let's see. That was awesome. What a great opportunity for me to be able to hook up to this big, like actual full-size trailer, and then take it out on the actual roads. That was awesome. 
That's it for day six here at Idaho CDL. We'll see you tomorrow. Good morning on my final day here at CDL school. I am training this morning, I'm testing this afternoon, and if all goes as planned, by tomorrow morning, I will be a licensed commercial driver. And today, I'm gonna try driving a different truck. I can figure out where the key goes. Does this truck have cruise control? I believe so. What? Dude, it's got a locking rear differential. And a jake brake? Oh, this truck is awesome. Jumped out of the truck, hitched up the trailer, went to go jump back in the truck, and <laughs> I locked the sound. Okay, good. Woo! All right, with all the fancy air ride features of this truck, Scott has promised me that my coffee will not spill without a lid. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Last day and I'm still stalling trucks. <laughs> Release our brakes and here we go. You still think I'm ready to test? Oh yeah. <laughs> I was having a lot of fun driving a different truck, but I'm starting to get anxious about my exam. I'm just an hour away from being tested on everything that I've learned in the past eight days. We're gonna jump back into the nine speed, fine tune just a few things before my test, and then this afternoon, wish me luck, I'll be testing. My time here at Idaho CDL has come to an end and it's time to test. The truck is in position and we're gonna start testing here any minute. If all goes well, I should be done with this test in an hour and a half. I'll check back in with you then. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Man. Guys, I passed. Yes! I was so nervous. I haven't been that nervous in a long time about something. My hands were shaking. I was sweaty. The whole deal, man. Scott, Congratulations, thank you very much, man. man. I yeah. appreciate it. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. I was shopping for a new pickup, and I think I found one. Whoa.